Welcome to the Quick Start video series for Cubase. My name's Walt Honeycutt. I'm a producer for Combined Minds Media, and I'll be your host and instructor for these tutorials. Together, we'll learn how to install and configure Cubase, and then we'll explore its features and capabilities. Whether you're a new user or a seasoned pro, you'll find helpful tips and techniques to improve your productions. These videos are intended to serve two purposes. First, they illustrate basic operations and help new users operate Cubase and avoid common mistakes. Second, they demonstrate some new features and techniques to help the advanced user get the most out of Cubase in the least amount of time. The videos are divided into two parts covering the following subjects. In part one, we'll demonstrate getting started, getting connected, basic audio recording, basic MIDI recording, and basic mixing. Then, in part two, we'll demonstrate advanced audio recording and processing, advanced MIDI applications, Steinberg's note expression technology, some advanced workflow techniques, the basics of scoring, including generating tablature, and the use of remote control devices, quick controls, and outboard equipment. Let's start with the basic equipment you need to use Cubase. Please also refer to the minimum system requirements for Cubase, which you can find printed on the box. At a minimum, you'll need a PC running Windows 7 or a Mac running OS 10.6, a USB e-licensor, and you'll also need a My Steinberg account, which you create during the registration process, an audio interface and microphone, a MIDI interface and a MIDI input device, speakers, an amplifier, and headphones. Configuring the software is a very simple three-step process installation, activation, and registration. Place the installation CD into your computer and then follow the on-screen prompts. Now we recommend that you activate your license and register the software immediately. Once Cubase is installed, double-click its icon to launch the program. When Cubase opens, the main screen that you'll see is the Steinberg Hub. The left side of the screen gives you quick access to things like news, downloads, and the knowledge base. The right side of the screen is where you begin to set up your new project. The six tabs along the top provide quick access to a wide variety of project templates for different activities. The recording and production templates are preloaded with tracks, instruments, and even some drum parts to get you up and going quickly. Now, when you record, Cubase streams the audio directly to your hard drive. This means that you have to tell Cubase where the project will be saved before you can begin to record. A Cubase project is actually made up of several parts, and the two most important parts are the project file and the audio folder. Now the project file contains all of the settings, and the audio folder contains the actual audio files. The menus at the bottom let you choose where Cubase will store your project. You should start a new project folder for each song to help keep things neat and organized. Select Prompt for Project Location if you want to manually create your project folder. Or select Use Default Location if you want Cubase to create the project folder. Let's start off with an empty project and we'll use the option for Prompt for Project Location. Then click Continue. Now let's navigate to the desktop and create a new folder called My First Project. Click Create, and then click Open. The main work area shown here is called the Project Window, and this is the Transport Panel. Let's create a few tracks to get oriented to the Cubase environment. Open the Project menu and hover over Add Track. The drop-down menu displays all of the types of tracks that you can create. Let's select Audio Track. 
and let's create three audio tracks at once by increasing the count from one to three. We're going to make these each mono tracks by changing the configuration from stereo to mono, and then click Add Track. Now let's take a look around and focus on a handful of key terms and some important icons. At the very top of the screen are 13 menus. You open them with a single click. And you can access some menu items with key commands. For example, the Project Setup function can also be opened by pressing Shift and S. Now if you see three dots after a menu item, it means that another menu will open with more choices. If you don't see any dots, the action will be carried out as soon as you click on the word. And if you see a black triangle, a sub-menu will appear when you hover over that item. Menu items shown in gray are not available at the current time. Now moving on to the project window. At the top center area of the window frame, you see the default author and project name. And since we haven't saved this project yet, the project name defaults to Untitled 1. The next row of icons is called the toolbar. And the toolbar contains icons for commonly used functions. You can right-click anywhere on the toolbar to see a list of active sections. And you can also open the setup window to further configure the toolbar. For example, let's hide the automation mode by selecting it and moving it to the hidden items list. We can also rearrange the information. So let's move the time display to the right end of the toolbar by selecting it in the visible items list, moving it down. Cubase has set up menus for many other functions that you can configure just like this one. One quick note, you can hover over just about any icon and Cubase will display a tooltip that tells you what the icon is, like this. Now, this icon is the Window Layout button, and it is a very important control. You see it throughout Cubase. When you click on the Window Layout button, the active window dims and a selection box appears. Here, you can choose which panels you wish to display in a given window. In this example, you can see that the Info Line and Inspector are visible, but the Status Line and Overview Line are hidden. Here's how it works. Anytime you see a Window Layout button, remember that there may be additional panels that are not being displayed. At the top of the project window is the project timeline. If you right click on the timeline, you can select what units it will display. And if you left click on the timeline, you'll move the project cursor to that location. If you left click and drag, you can zoom in and out. And there are many other ways to zoom. And we'll look at that in just a moment. Two of the most important tools in Cubase are these white triangles called locators. Locators define the starting and ending points for your project. You click and drag to adjust their location. If the locators are placed correctly, the area between them will be light blue. If you transpose them, the area between the locators turns red to alert you to the problem. At the left edge of the project window is the track inspector. The inspector provides quick access to controls and settings for that track. The functions are organized under several collapsible tabs. To open a tab, you click it, close the tab, click it again. Now some track functions are duplicated in multiple locations. The first tab is open by default. Here you'll find the track name, a duplicate set of track controls, as well as controls for track volume, stereo panning, track delay, which is used in synchronization, and controls for setting the track's input and output source. We'll look closely at these features in later chapters. This icon is the Edit Channel Settings button. This is a very important control, and you'll see it throughout Cubase. Whenever you see this icon, you can click on it to open the editing function for that area. Finally, we have a few more basic navigation tools. We have standard scroll bars for horizontal and vertical viewing. You can click and drag the lower right-hand corner to resize the project window. You also have a set of zoom controls. Click and drag the triangles to configure the horizontal zoom and the track height. You also have preset zoom levels. They're available from these pop-up menus. 
That's it for the first chapter. Now let's move on to chapter two and we'll get Cubase connected inside and out. Thank you.